The year, 1975, the album, Hitman. Eddie Kendrick vowed to make you happy, baby. But we're gonna make you happy too, or at least we're gonna try, as we kick off a new year, a new decade of PPD TV. We have some amazing guests with some amazing stories, so please stick around as we kick off PPD TV. Welcome to PPD TV. I'm Staff Inspector Sekou Kennebrew. And I'm Inspector Altavis Love Craighead. And we have quite a great show for you uh, lined up. This is our first show back after the holidays. Yep. How was your holidays? It was nice. Right. You, you came with a new title. Yeah, I saw you, had a, you must have had a great holiday. I, yeah, well, what I, happened? I, I, Went trick or treating for Halloween, and someone dumped these in the candy bag, and that's and that's how I came back. Staff inspector. Staff inspector. Yes, no, I was promoted. With the, yes, in fact, one of our guests was also promoted in the same promotional cast, uh, class too. So we'll be congratulations. Happy. Yep, and um, as this is our last episode before Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. it gives us an opportunity to talk about love. Love, and love will keep us together. That's right, and you can't talk <laughs> about love without talking about marriage, which will get us to our first guest, but we also have the first guest today, which will be the Rodriguez's, but we also have another guest coming Yes, down, we down have somebody too. from the LGBTQ community that's going to talk about police and engagement. Yeah, right, and, uh, and in fact, the uh, LGBTQ community liaison falls under your committee, It correct? sure does, under the Community Relations Division. Well, great. Well, as I mentioned, we have quite a treat for you. We have with us captains, plural, <laughs> Javier and Maria Ortiz Rodriguez. Javier Rodriguez is the captain of the 25th District, and the other captain, Rodriguez, is the captain of the Advanced Training Unit, and we're happy to have them. Welcome to the big comfy couch. Welcome. And, and Thank you for I got to say, I, oh, matter of fact, let me make this declaration right now. I think this is groundbreaking. This is the first time in the history of the Philadelphia Police Department that a married couple has both been captains at the same time. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's not I know. true. That's why I said it. <laughs> I humbly pass on the torch to them. That's Thank right. You. For a year, for about, what, four or five years, the Craigheads the Craig were captain, captain and Captain Craig. Yes. Yes, yep. but now it's the Rodriguez's. Well, it's about time y'all showed up. We've been trying to get y'all for, <laughs> for how long. We had Jero and Dawn try to fill it in. We were real happy to have them, but y'all remember it was y'all that were supposed to be here. So and they were supposed to be here at Halloween. Yes. yes. But Captain Javier Rodriguez does this, well, the both of you do it together, this gigantic Halloween thing. Yes. Yep. Yep. And um, that's what kept them from coming. Yep. Well, let me start. Last time we uh, started with, with Jerome, I want to start with you, Maria, because you and I have something in common. We were in the most recent uh, promotional class, so congratulations uh, you, on your promotion. You. And you are now the commanding officer of the Advanced Training Unit, which is the Training Bureau in general is near and dear to my heart, as everyone knows. Um, how is it going so far? I love it. It's going great. I'm enjoying it. So I, I want to go back just a little bit. You didn't just come out of nowhere. You were in, in, uh, in Southwest, right, right before that. 19th District. And you were very attended. involved in a lot of the community engagement activities, which is why we couldn't get you on the show right, like yeah. we wanted to. Tell us about your time there. Then we're going to switch over to Javier, and then we'll for, see how you lovebirds met. In the 19th, wow. So, so first of all, my name is Captain Maria Ortiz Rodriguez. Like you just mentioned, I have 25 years on the job mm. uh, in June, 25 years. Okay. Um, I started off in the 12th district, so okay. I'm a West Philly mm -hmm. police officer okay. for most of my career. Uh, the 12th district, then internal affairs, uh, mm -hmm. made detective four years later, okay. um, went to special victims, mm -hmm. and from there I made sergeant, second district, then internal affairs. I made lieutenant and went to the 19th district, which mm -hmm. I have enjoyed for the last three and a half years prior to getting promoted to captain. Mm -hmm. Very much involved with the community out there in the 19th district. Um, some of the things that we did was um, we, uh, we used to go to the, center, to the uh, senior centers mm -hmm. and play bingo with them. Mm -hmm. I would grab a couple of my officers and um, we would play bingo. We would uh, uh, help serve the, the lunch for them. Mm -hmm. we, one day we had officers sponsor um, a couple of high school 
teenagers and had dinner with them at a hibachi. We called it the hibachi night. Mm -hmm. That was really interesting. So we, we did a lot. The officers and the supervisors in the 19th district work really hard. They work really hard, and I enjoy being there for that reason. And All from the 9th squad. All, All from the line squad. squad. Yep. You exactly. didn't. You had to work through them. For people that don't know, what that means is she was still working rotating shifts, different days off every two weeks, right. still in the grind. Didn't have any kind of you know preferential hours, and still was able to get it done. And mm -hmm. they they had to still answer nine one one calls still while they were calls. doing their community events. and doing a lot of stuff on your own time. Right. Right. In exactly. Fact, I know you were because even after you got promoted, you still had a hand in a very important Christmas activity. Um, that uh, if you want to talk about that, that and we how did. that went this year. So uh, we do the um, parandas, what we call parandas in Spanish. It's like Christmas caroling, uh, the Spanish version of Christmas caroling. Mm -hmm. And um, Salea helps us with that. They What's actually Salea? host it. Salea is the Spanish American Law Enforcement Association. Mm -hmm. And um, we brought the, uh, the idea to the president of Salea, Eddie Lopez. Mm -hmm. And he's great. Any, any ideas that we come across and, and we tell him about, he helps us with it. Mm -hmm. So they host it and we did, we uh, pretty much brought Christmas caroling to the Nazario family mm -hmm. this year and it was very special, very, a, a lot of fun and they appreciate it. And it's a good way of letting them know that we still remember yeah. the officers and we still remember them and, and continue to take care of them. Yeah, fallen officer Isabel Nazario, um, right. still in our hearts. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's such a wonderful thing and again, you were doing that after your promotion, you're already in your new assignment, but you still were uh, doing a lot of the exactly. community engagement things mm -hmm. that you were already doing. And um, how is it so far in the training bureau, though? I enjoy it. I have a lot of hard workers there. It's, it's yep. a lot of work. I took for granted that, uh, you know, you actually work hard at conducting a class, yep. you know, standing up there, teaching a class mm -hmm. and uh, making sure everything goes well and they're giving out tests and all that stuff, scoring them. So mm -hmm. they actually work hard. I, and I'm happy I with it. I think you know, and we all know sitting at, 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 you know, on this set, how important it is for continual training and for pre professional de development. Like for example, you have advanced training, which means you're for the c basically continuing education and certifications of police officers, whereas Captain Clark has recruit training at the beginning. And nothing's more important than reminding us that we all still have a lot to learn. A lot of things that we learn, the tools that we learn from you, mm -hmm. we of course apply to our day to day. So we do appreciate the work you do. I know we're running a little out of time before the first break, but I want to introduce Captain Javier Rodriguez. Uh, welcome. We go way back, 1996, 24th <laughs> District, two squad in the house. Uh, Wait a minute. I'm just listening how I don't go back with anybody. <laughs> well, he, he didn't say you go, back, you go back with me. I go back with her. Oh, that's right. That's right. You go we back were, with I was a lieutenant. I don't know. Were you a lieutenant at the same time? I was we a were sergeant. in training mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And that's when we first met. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we've been friends ever since. We went to lunch every day together. Sure and we've been friends ever since. Well, why did you mm -hmm. say that? I'm saying it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been friends for longer because we worked in the same district. <laughs> no, we go way back. I was in 2A, you were in 2C, right? 2B. 2B, 2B, yep. And, uh, in, in which Sergeant district? 24th. In the 24th in district? 24th, yeah. 24th. Uh, matter of fact, you've uh, been quite around the horn in East Division, haven't you? you yeah, I spent most of my career in East. 2-4 uh, twice as an officer sergeant, 2-5 as a sergeant, and now the captain, strike force field unit. And then I did, a, I did three years in the 18th. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well. It is great to have both of you. We are nearing a time for a break, um, but when we come back, we do want to talk to you guys. I want to get into a little bit of your career, uh, Captain Rodriguez, and then we want to talk about uh, how you guys met and how it is being a married couple trying to you know, make this thing work and getting the job done. So we'll be right back. This is the city where danger lurks. Today, a new creature walks among us, terrorizing innocent citizens. They prowl the streets alone and in packs, causing mayhem, destruction, and carnage. Warning, until this threat can be contained, we must all be on the lookout for the dreaded digital dead walkers. They're not looking out for you. Dude. Engage. A public service safety message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons who want to keep everyone well connected. Sorry. With strong, healthy bones. We are back. 
professional PPD TV. <laughs> We're back with the Rodriguez and Javier. We left off with you. You're the captain of 25th. I know uh, not only in terms of your crime fighting strategies, you're you know, managing your personnel. You, just like Maria, are very entrenched in community engagement. I've leaned on you multiple times to, uh, uh, to, to help me with uh, messaging and, and uh, media. Uh, m media coordination, particularly and I lean on them now. all the time, particularly because you speak Spanish too. Right. So not only are you doing it, you know, you can communicate the way it needs to be communicated. So right. uh, how, how has it been? Uh, CO25 for what, three years now, two years? Three years in March. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's been good. It's a learning experience. Um, and the community aspect is something that I had to learn. It wasn't something that we did. Mm -hmm. You're a cop in the mm -hmm. line squad, you know, you're running from call to call. Yep. You don't get a lot of those opportunities, whether you're a sergeant or whether you're in a special unit like the Narcotics Bureau. So um, the first taste of it was actually with then Captain Wimberly, Deputy mm -hmm. Wimberly in the 18th district when I switched um, from last out to the line squad because of our schedule. Yeah. Uh, we were both lieutenants together at the same time in West Philly. I went to one squad so one morning, I think it was uh, a Valentine's Day, she said, come with me. And we went to a uh, senior center. Mm -hmm. And it was my first taste of actually, uh, um, you know, interacting with the community other than a, a radio call yeah. or, or a scene. So, you know, I loved it. Mm -hmm. Inspector Johnson was there, yep. you know, her whole community uh, relations staff. Mm -hmm. So I going to the I two, five, you and the yeah. 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 Well, that yeah. Well, was, that was the my same. first, you know, real interaction. Right. So going to the 2-5, it was already established because of respect to Cram, who was then the captain, and all the other captains before that. Um, so it was, it was easy, and I had uh, Al Cruz there, um, and now I have uh, Ryan, um, who does a great, mm -hmm. great job. I'm stealing um, him when So, I yeah, you know what? And, 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 and we spoke about this before. I would want that for him because then the city can benefit right. from, you know, what he brings. And we, we've, we've got a lot of great community relations officers throughout this uh, this department, mm -hmm. you know, it's something that gets overlooked by a lot of people. Yep. Right. Everything mm -hmm. isn't, you know, putting cuffs on, on people, right. um, you know, although that's a big aspect of what we do. So yeah. Halloween, I mentioned it earlier. Yes. Tell us about this now. I, this was the first time that I had come and I was amazed at how many people were out there. And so it was, it looked like it was so much fun. Yeah, so the way it started was the 19th district did something in their district. So me, Ryan, and Al Cruz sat around the table and says, how can we do this here? So one of them said, let's do it outside. Why don't we just take it into Hunting Park? So the ideas just kept popping and you know, we, were, we wanted to bring something that a lot of the kids from the neighborhood may be not able to do on their own. They can't go to the farms to do the hay rides. They can't go to the penitentiary. So how, you know, how can we bring right. this about? So we reached out to all the the, the political uh, um, um, allies that we have in the district, all the nonprofits, just everybody. So this is what we're gonna do. So the first year was a, was a success. Last year was even bigger. And the day, the day after, even the, during the event, when you have people already speaking about the next year and how we can all improve it, you know, you, you know really it's a success. It, yeah. you know? And you, we had civilians coming up to us, people from the community. How can I be involved? How can I volunteer? So tell us everything you had there. I, I saw the hayride. I saw <laughs> we the had trunk about, or treat. We had about mm -hmm. 40 trunks for the trunk or treat. And trophies. We had trophies actually this year for that. We had uh, a corn maze because that was another thing. We mm -hmm. said, how can we bring a corn maze? Ryan went and found Mr. one. Corn maze. Yeah, it was an inflatable <laughs> corn maze. Um, we have bounce houses. You were here, right? <laughs> We had a guy come from well, New York with a train. Actually, I went there after this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. I went there that, yeah, I went there that, that night. That was the day. Yeah. Um, and, of course, the hayride. And our officers volunteer. They get dressed up, and, you know, they, they scare the kids. And it's some of them never even been on hay, you know, some of wow. the kids. So we, we rent the U-Haul trucks. Officers bring the, um, the, uh, the trucks, the, for, uh, the pickup trucks. We rent U-Haul uh, um, trailers. One officer went to Florida to pick up a trailer to make sure that he had it for Halloween. So we had three trucks just running through the park and you know everybody was enjoying themselves. Uh, we've got people already thinking of how to make it even better next year and like cordon off areas and block the whole park. Mm -hmm. And I was told that somebody who was coming when they crossed Erie Avenue, which is a few blocks, they saw people, families walking, walking. with their children. So, you know, and that's the whole purpose uh, uh, to create this and many other events for the people of the community. Any idea how many people attended? People throw numbers out there. I, I, it was a few thousand. It was a lot of people. It was a lot of people. We, 
we ran out of candy, I think, in 45 minutes, wow. which, is a, which is a problem we're trying to fix. And we're trying to get uh, um, sponsors to, to be able to have more candy on hand, just so the kids go home with something that right. night. Right. So I know we're running low on time. I always feel like we think we have more time than we do. So we do. We ain't gonna let y'all leave before we get in y'all business. How long y'all been married? It's Fourteen years. Fourteen, 14 years. December. All right. just and passed. you have children? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, three. Uh, two. I have a stepdaughter. And we have one child together. So it's two stepdaughters and one child together. The hours have to. Well, now they're finally good. Finally, oh, after yeah. so much though, fourteen yeah. years. That was my encouragement to get her to take the test. I hear you know. So you make captain, you don't get night command, you'll right. be, you know, yeah. Monday through Friday. Right. Right. Well, we are so happy for you. We're happy that you joined us. We want to bring you back. I feel like we just cut, cut you short. You both have so much uh, to, to offer to us. Thank you so much. And uh, sit tight. We do have a couple of, some business to take care of. Um, but thanks so much for showing up. Thank, Thank you. you for Appreciate inviting you. us. Thanks. All right. We mentioned, uh, you heard Captain, the captains mention community events um, and how that's such an important part of what we do in, in, in policing um, and it's becoming more and more important as well as it should be. So last week we just came off of Martin Luther King Day we did. and uh, we have um, many Martin Luther King Day uh, day of service type events throughout the city in all districts and you're about to see something um, that, that speaks to that. So stick around. My name is Police Officer Courtney Smith. I'm the Community Relations Officer for the 16th District in West Philadelphia. On Monday, January 20th, I invite you to, to the 25th anniversary of Martin Luther King Day to spend it with the 16th District for our MLK Day of Service. I think it's very important for the community to see cops in a different light. And I feel like police organized events give the community the opportunity to see that police actually do care and we do want to see you do better. We don't want to see you in prison. We actually want to help you and, you know, give you a chance so we're not meeting you when you're angry, embarrassed, upset, or in trouble. Some of the challenges that I believe I have when doing these type of events or bringing people together, like I said, is just the resistance of people thinking that, you know, it's the police and we don't care. And I believe this event is a good opportunity for people to see on a day of service. We're not just, you know, trying to plant flowers or we're not trying to paint a wall. Look, we're trying to help you write your resume so you can get a job. We're trying to get you some clothes so, you you know, you don't have to go out and possibly steal or take something. You got, you know, new clothes here. Some of the major highlights, one is going to be our guest speaker, Andre Wise who is from the community and I feel like, you know, when he speaks, he touches everybody and I feel like, you know, a lot of people will be, be able to relate and get excited. We're gonna be offering two raffles. One is gonna be for a teeth whitening offered by Halo Ali. The other is gonna be for free entry to an entrepreneur program from Sunny Flavors. P. Michael and his Junior Barber Academy, they're gonna be coming. I think, I think it's a good opportunity to see people in a happy light and see that, you know what, look, we're not trying to lock you up. We wanna help you get a resource. We wanna help you get a job. We wanna help you, you know, um, get your health taken care of or help you with your financial literacy or help you write this resume so you can get a job and you don't have to be on the street. That was Officer, that was Officer Courtney Smith from the right. 16th District. I know you were at one time the captain of the 16th District. She's the community relations officer now. She does some amazing work. Right, and here we're looking at some photos. You know, it's just a lot going on in the city. There's a lot of community relations officers that do a lot of stuff during these special times. Um, sometimes even coming out of their own pockets for it and spending their own money. But, um, you know, there was an event at Gerard College, a large event for a day of service. And so here we see some of the pictures. Oh, okay. This is great. I see she's still in some of them. <laughs> there were others around the city. Yeah. But she works so hard and she does such a great job. Mm -hmm. You can look at the smiles on everyone's face. Um, and, uh, yeah, she's amazing. And that's, that's all over the city. And we do it every year. And one, one event, um, they actually were cutting. They had a barber there cutting hair. This Mike Jarrett. That's from, like, I Derek D. Wood. Fox 29, mm -hmm. yeah. Looks like a DJ booth. Yeah. yeah, we don't just stay inside the walls of the police district. We, exactly. we, we go out and about. So. With all of our partners oh, throughout the city. Yes, we, yep. And so uh, we saw the haircuts. Private yep. sector, yep. nonprofits. So. Yeah, we get a lot of support yeah. and we need it. Yep. <laughs> we Community support. groups and yep. different neighborhoods. Yep. Yep. Well, that's probably the most rewarding part of what we did. Mm -hmm. this part. Getting out and into the getting community. Out, yeah. Getting away from the normal routine yep. Yep. and getting to meet people. I like that's the part I like the most. Getting to meet people. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. That was Dr. Martin Luther King Day of Service. A lot of uh, 
visuals from all the things that went on uh, in the city, mm -hmm. and uh, something we do every year that that, that uh, it's just just it's so rewarding um, and it's it's so fulfilling to be out and about with the community. Right, right. And we are very thrilled to have our next <laughs> guest. We thank the Rodriguez's for joining us. But right now, and you're gonna you're not gonna like it because I'm gonna say my good friend, ah, <laughs> who, who I go way back with, we <laughs> Officer back. Joe Mason, looking good in the bike uniform. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying to slim down. <laughs> you ride your good. bike here? I did not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we wouldn't have told you to say that. <laughs> Welcome aboard, Officer Mason. You are now in the second district, but we go back from the 14th. <laughs> we do. I actually, uh, the first time I met uh, Staff Inspector Kinnebrew, he was Detective Kinnebrew yes. in SIU. I uh, came up on a car. We were in an area for a bunch of burglaries, and as I pulled up, there was a tinted up car, two heads mm -hmm. in it, and I thought I was being <laughs> slick, and the window cracked down. It's a detective, and he hands you a business card, goes, pretend it's a license and get out of here. Yeah. Watch it come by. <laughs> That's true. 15 minutes later, he had the arrest. Yeah. <laughs> that is a true story. I forgot about that. Well, yeah. you may have known him for a long time, but I get to spend a lot of time with him now. That Why is, is that? True. That's because he's he's part of our LGBTQ liaison committee yep. um, that we have in the community. And so I'm always looking to him to go out with me yep. or to represent the department in that community. And he so graciously does. Well, that's, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons we brought you out here. I know that uh, I wanted to, you, to talk a little bit about goal, yes. because we just happen to be in the midst of a, of a uh, membership drive. Um, I know you have some event coming up. Or, it was actually it, it just Friday. happened yes, Friday. Friday. Oh, Friday. Well, talk about it and, and tell me what you did. Tell uh, us what goal well, tell is. Tell us what goal is first. And then, yeah. uh, goal is the Gay Officers Action League. Uh, mm -hmm. It was formed in New York City in 1982. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, they were debating uh, an equal partnership bill, uh, whether or not uh, domestic partnerships should be recognized in city employees. And uh, the, the head of their police department at the time said that obviously gays didn't have the fortitude to be police officers, it would never work. And uh, a sergeant named Charles Cochran came forward and gave testimony at that same meeting, uh, saying that he was a proud New York City Police Department sergeant as well as a gay man. And uh, he formed Goal. We were late to the game here in Philadelphia. We started forming Goal in 2015, mm -hmm. and a lot of it came about I know uh, we'll talk about the trans directive. Yep. A lot of it came, there, were, uh, there was an incident that I had witnessed and I had written an anonymous letter uh, through the department that went through Nellie Fitzpatrick, mm -hmm. who's uh, the liaison to the yep. mayor's office at the time. Um, basically, it, it was an incident that I had witnessed where nothing had happened within the community. It was harmful language I had heard just cops using amongst themselves. And when I wrote this letter, all I asked for, I said, well, look, I just feel like we need more training. I don't want to see people punished. I want right. to see people be better. Um, so Nellie called me on it and said, if you want people to be better, it's time to be better. Right. And uh, we formed Goal uh, here in Philadelphia. So our first meeting was in 2016, uh, officially as a chapter. And uh, yeah, just this past Friday, we had a happy hour down mm -hmm. at Taboo um, to gauge interest. Mm -hmm. We've seen our membership as high as 60 um, officers from the, the greater Philadelphia area. Okay. And it looks like after it could easily double after what we saw on Friday. Yeah, was, I heard great. about the event and um, the people that I talked to said they really had a good time. It was fantastic. It was, yeah, it I like didn't it was dance. Really it was <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I don't know. The way you were behaving around here and then showing us your dance moves. Uh, I can't believe it. It's not on camera. You can't prove it. <laughs> it didn't happen. Oh, <laughs> hey, man, you mentioned training. Yes. I had the privilege of, I hit the microphone again. <laughs> I had the privilege of sitting in uh, to a training you gave to officers um, in your capacity uh, as a member of GOAL. Can you talk about that training and how useful and beneficial? I, I was mesmerized, and you were fantastic. I appreciate that. Thank yep. you. Um, I'm lucky enough. There's a group of us. It's myself. It's uh, Sergeant McTease. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Rashid um, from the 24th. Mm -hmm. I think he actually worked for uh, Captain Rodriguez. And we, uh, we were given the opportunity. We were told that uh, when it comes to training recruits, they would like to see LGBT community members mm -hmm. be the ones who train recruits. Uh, I identify as gender fluid okay. or gender queer. Um, I'm somewhere in between male and female, I'm non-binary. And uh, when they came to us and they said, would you guys be willing to be a part of the training? And in just the few years from they asked if we would like to attend and speak and kind of tell our stories, um, the department's been amazing in that we now completely give the training. Okay. We've had the opportunity to write the training program. We've gone up to New York to witness how they do it mm -hmm. and bring some of that back. And uh, I think we actually have a, a training. We just expanded another hour, up to three hours now. Okay, good. And uh, that's our, the first time doing the three-hour training will be this coming Monday, okay. February 3rd. So yeah, we're all, all a bit were, nervous. But you all were practicing. We were. I guess about a week, <laughs> week and a half ago. We did. Yeah. We, I think we took over the war room. They took over yeah, the, our, our crime briefing room. They yeah, took that over. So. 
That's it, great. And so you all were also involved in instituting this new directive that the police department has where everybody in a department has to follow these new rules. Yes. So tell us about it. Um, well, obviously, Philadelphia was amazing that I believe we were one of the first major departments to have a trans directive. Good. And that goes back five or six years, I think, mm -hmm. was the, the previous incarnation. And you, I love this department because we don't rest on our laurels. We don't say, look, we've done it, that's enough. Mm -hmm. It's, we've done it, now how can we do it better? Mm -hmm. And in just that five years, we had the opportunity to sit down, to review the directive again, uh, to let the community have a seat at the table um, between myself and civilians, and say, what's the input? What do we need to know? Where can we be better? Um, so our directive, uh, this past June, I believe it was. Right. Uh, I'm trying to think exactly when the date was, right. but this past June, we had the opportunity to roll out an updated version of that directive in how we as officers relate to the community. And uh, it's by far the most forward thinking directive in the country. I have officers that I'm friends with from all over the country who reach out and go, can I, can I get a copy of that? Do you mind if we take a look at that? Oh, Something wow. I can bring back right, with us. Right. So it's pretty amazing. That's great. And then that culminated into Pride Day where we had the first LGBTQ pride car in mm -hmm. the parade. And we did, and what I loved about it was Philadelphia has their pride flag. When Amber Heights yep. was the director right. in the mayor's office, and they added the two colors. And right. again, it just shows the department is embracing and forward thinking. Yeah. And, and we uh, see, we're seeing we're our, our website yeah. um, with Sergeant Tease, myself, and Deputy Commissioner Joseph Sullivan, who's been our cheerleader in this whole, um, this whole uh, I don't know, movement yes. that we have and yep. allowing us to yep you know, do the things that we do. Yep, and, and to that point, we don't operate on a, in a silo. I mean, we talked about the liaison, we talked about the, um, you know, Commissioner Sullivan, but you also work with the city, Amber, at one time. Uh, just real quick, speak to that. Uh, you're working with the city as far as the, the city, trainings and everything? Yes. Um, a lot, it's nice that, it, one of the great things about this department is we will always make sure that the community has a seat at the table. But what's been nice in like the mayor's office, they've made sure that the department gets represented in all of these areas too. Okay. Jill, thank you so We're much for joining us. We always seem to run you. out of time. It's <laughs> great having you here. Thank you. So there's something I wanted to share. Um, you know, earlier in the beginning, we said that you got promoted to mm -hmm. staff inspector. He was previously a captain. And we just wanted to show our appreciation to you Aww. and congratulate you. Thank you. Um, we have some gifts for you. Oh, it's from me. myself, our communications director, Denise James, <laughs> Rise, Officer Rise Talley, and Sergeant Eric Grip. And Thank so, you. Thank you. On our behalf. <laughs> <laughs> If I stand, am I going to knock my No, we're, 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 we're attached. Out. Okay, we have to we stay wanted seated. To pre present you Thank you. With some flowers, some flowers, some balloons, and oh, a small gift. Y'all going to make me cry. And to say thank you for your time, for the time that I've known you. We've been friends and we came up in the ranks together. But yes. Congratulations on your promotion. Thank you so thank much. Thank you all for joining us on this, this episode of PPT, PPD TV. We'll see you next time. Y'all making me cry. <laughs> <laughs>